With more online film discourse than ever before, the much debated plot hole feels like it gets attached to literally every film at some point in its life post-release. However, while it can be fun to point these things out and potentially gain a greater understanding of how various parts of a film were chopped and changed around, there is a lot of misusing this term. I'm Scott from WhatCulture.com and these are 8 famous movie plot holes that are not plot holes. Number 8. The Film Forgets About Amanda Taken Liam Neeson's Taken revolves around retired field agent Brian Mills traveling to France after his daughter Kim and her friend Amanda are kidnapped. In the finale, Brian manages to locate Kim at a sex trafficking auction and has her returned home safely. Despite the film receiving high praise from viewers, there was one plot point that kept being brought up. Just what the hell happened to Kim's friend? Obviously, Mills getting his daughter back safe and sound was Brian's top priority, but it seems odd that he didn't even attempt to track down or acknowledge Amanda. Well, watch again and you'll notice that Brian did locate Amanda as after Brian kills the good luck guy at the safe house, Mills heads upstairs to find a group of drugged women and right there is also Amanda's body. As Amanda's corpse is discolored and she is only seen for a second, most viewers didn't register that this was Kim's friend. Number 7. How did Cypher enter the Matrix by himself? The Matrix. In 1999's blockbuster sci-fi opus, Morpheus and his crew have dedicated their lives to freeing as many minds as possible from the Matrix, a simulation that is indistinguishable from 21st century life. Morpheus explains to Neo that everyone has great difficulty adjusting when they are released from the Matrix as they realize their entire life was a lie. One of Morpheus's crew members, Cypher, has grown tired of living in the real world and wants to go back to living in the fake one. In one scene, we see him presumably plugged in, selling out his teammates to Agent Smith to gain passage. This moment bothers a lot of people though since it's been emphasized that a person can't jack into the Matrix without someone else serving as the operator. According to directors the Wachowskis though, Cypher isn't in the Matrix. He's in a separate program constructed so he can jack in and jack out at will. He designed it so no one else can access it except the agents so he can talk to them in private. The reason Cypher acts so jumpy in the movie when Neo randomly enters his quarters is because he's putting the final touches on this secret program before using it. Number 6. Why Didn't Mr. Freeze Cure His Wife? Batman and Robin Batman and Robin is one of the most plot hole ridden inconsistent films of all time. Why does Mr. Freeze smoke a cigar if heat can kill him? Why doesn't Batman get frozen after Mr. Freeze uses an ice ray on the entire city? How can Batman even have a credit card without exposing his identity? One of the biggest issues though revolves around Bruce Wayne's butler, Alfred Pennyworth. Alfred is dying from McGregor Syndrome, the same condition as Mr. Freeze's wife. After Batman has a heart to heart with Freeze at the end, Victor agrees to give Bruce the medicine needed to save Alfred. Alfred's life, noting his partner suffers from the same thing. So why didn't Freeze just use the remedy on his wife the whole time? The answer is actually simple. Batman asks Freeze for the cure for McGregor Syndrome Stage 1. Freeze's wife is notably at an advanced stage of the same syndrome, hence Victor having in-progress files for earlier stages to hand. Number 5. Why didn't Gandalf use the Eagles? Lord of the Rings Almost 20 years on, we're still debating the eagles in Lord of the Rings. Now, the go-to explanation is that the eagles as a species are simply not concerned with the matters of mortals, and they only get involved when events get to a level of importance that they simply can't not. That's what the book readers will tell you anyway, which doesn't work in the context of just the movies. Even only sticking to the films though, the solution was here all along. Remember, what's the first thing Frodo does when he learns of the dangers of the ring? His instinct is to give it to Gandalf. Here and only here we see Gandalf react to the power of the ring, and this is after he sees a flash of Sauron's eye when talking to Bilbo earlier. Gandalf gets very imposing, yelling at the halfling, terrified that Sauron's dark power will corrupt him entirely if he holds the ring at all. It's here where we can reasonably state that Gandalf cannot carry the ring, on an eagle or otherwise, lest his powers get taken over or interfered with by Sauron. Gandalf clearly realizes the ring didn't corrupt Bilbo and has no current effect on Frodo, despite it being in the former's possession for over 50 years. Yes, it resulted in Bilbo's agitated My Precious scene, but Gandalf rightfully assumes all this is down to the purity of hobbits overall, making Frodo the perfect candidate for transport. As for the eagles, well, in the context of this trilogy, they're arguably on hand whenever Gandalf needs them. Considering the fear Gandalf has for his own actions when alone with just Frodo or Bilbo and the ring though, well, climbing aboard a powerful mythical creature with all that power is clearly not a good idea. Number 4. How did Sarah Connor know how to crush the Terminator? 
The Terminator. In the final chase scene of The Terminator, Sarah Connor and Kyle Reese try everything they can to stop the titular time-traveling cyborg, but to no avail. Even after blowing him up twice, this killer robot just keeps coming. After pursuing Sarah into a factory, she lures it into a hydraulic press. As Connor crawls through to the other side, she presses a switch that activates the machine, crushing the Terminator for good. There is just one tiny problem though. How did Sarah Connor know what button to hit to activate the hydraulic press? Coming from a background in waitressing, that's a far cry from being an expert at operating machinery. James Cameron, though, has a knack for fixing potential potholes if you watch again. Take note of when Sarah walks into the factory and she accidentally leans on a switch, which activates a press. That is how she knows it works. Not only can this moment be disregarded as a plot hole, but it's actually a really clever way to foreshadow what's about to happen to the Terminator. Number 3. What Happened to the Pterosaurs? Jurassic World like every film in the franchise, the characters in Jurassic World make a series of idiotic decisions, which causes the dinosaurs to break out of the theme park and begin chomping down on the residents. As the pterosaurs grab tourists in their talons and drop them to their death, the staff successfully shoot several of them with tranquilizers. However, a couple of these winged reptiles manage to escape from the resort. So what happened? Were they ever caught? Did they kill anyone else? Why isn't this mentioned in the sequel? Well, the fate of the pterosaurs is explained in one line that most viewers miss. At one point it's mentioned that all the dinosaurs at Isla Nublar are intentionally bred with an amino deficiency so they can only survive by eating the food supplied to them by staff. If they manage to escape, they will be unable to receive the nutrients necessary for survival, thus solving the problem. The staff are aware they can't track the pterosaurs after they escape, but they also know they'll be dead soon anyway. Hilariously, this is a plot hole for Jurassic World Dominion as dinosaurs are now out and running about everywhere, but what can you do? Number 2. The Time Turner – Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban In Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban, Hermione and Harry use a Time Turner to travel back several hours. As soon as this time machine was introduced, many viewers pointed out that Harry should have used it to stop Voldemort from killing his parents back when he was a baby. Much as I hate leaning on novels for explanations though, it is writ large. Here we get told that Hermione's Time Turner can only go back several hours and can't return the user to their original timeline. There are other Time Turners that allow the user to go Go back further, but they are off limits to students, and nearly all of them are destroyed by the seventh novel. Even if Harry got his hands on a more powerful time turner and used it to stop his parents from being killed, he would then be trapped in that timeline. And number one, spinning around the world, Superman. 1978 Superman may have been a smash hit, but even diehard fans can't help but laugh at the movie's climax. After Lex Luthor detonates a missile, Kal-El does everything in his power to stop the explosion, but despite his best efforts, Lois Lane is killed. Unable to accept her death, Supes launches into the sky and begins flying at phenomenal speed. As the Man of Steel zooms around the world, we see the Earth's rotation reverse, seemingly winding back time. After time traveling a few minutes into the past, Superman has enough of a gap to rescue Lois. Many viewers laughed at the absurdity of this though since reversing the Earth's rotation would not turn back time. However, that is not what's actually happening in this scene. Superman didn't go back in time by spinning the globe around. He went back in time by traveling at the speed of light. The Earth's rotation reversing is not caused by Superman's super speed and instead it's almost a mistake. Turns out director Richard Donner only inserted a shot of the Earth's rotation going backwards because he thought it would look cool, indirectly making every viewer misinterpret what was actually going on. And there you have it, various plot holes we've all talked to death that were easily explained. Let me know your own favourites down in the comments below. For now, I've been Scott from whatculture.com and I'll catch you soon.